sometimes two wires just isn't enough for testing. So today we're going to use four. We're going to revisit the Kelvin wire setup for a very inexpensive method of testing your resistance. Resistance is futile. So this is not the first time I've talked about Kelvin wire setups. Let's just write it down here so you, knew, you, you know how to spell it. Kelvin wire. This is a Kelvin wire resistance testing method that I'm going to show you. Now, you can go online and you can get resistance testers that go pretty low. If you look on Amazon, somewhere between $120 and $160 will get you something that gets down into the micro ohms. That would be mm, 0.01 which is pretty good resolution for getting your resistance. However, if you want to get an extra zero on there, that is a milliohm. And a milliohm setup is going to be anywhere from 500, 600 plus, a thousand bucks for a nice benchtop system. And what I'm going to show you today is how to spend maybe $60. You could probably get this done for 50 or less and be able to test to the milliohm precision without spending half a grand or more. So let's start out with why would you want to be able to test the resistance of an object to this sort of precision? If you are into racing at all and you want to find yourself a spec motor, you know, a, t a 21 turn or a 17 turn or whatever your spec motor class is, if you have a few motors to select from, you can actually use this to select the one that's going to have the lowest resistance because the lowest resistance that you can get for any given KV, it's going to give you the most power. You're going to have the most, or I'm sorry, the least resistive losses, which is going to give you the most ability to extract power from your motor because we're always limited with the amount of heat that we can shed and your copper losses are essentially the resistance of the motor. Why else would you need it? Uh, maybe just for playing around like me. I really like to test the resistance of things. Uh, let's say I get some new motors or whatever, you can compare them. I'm gonna compare two different 1800 kV motors to each other so you can see the topology of a motor actually does make a pretty big difference when it comes out to what your power can be out of it. So let's get started here. I'm gonna do our wires in red. So on one side, we're gonna have an ohm meter, and on the other side, we're gonna have a controlled current, controlled voltage power supply. Now, really, we only need the controlled current, but if you're getting a controlled current power supply, it's also gonna have controlled voltage on there. So if you just search for CCCV power supply and an ohm meter, you can get both of these parts. Now, you will need to be able to solder to make your four wire Kelvin lead. Let me show you here. So we're going to have our ohm meter coming to one side of our object to test right here. This is the sign for resistance, little squiggly line. And then on the other side of our ohm meter, we are going to be at the other side of our object to test here. Now I'm going to go back to green here. Our controlled current power supply is going to inject current through this object here. So we're going to have a wire coming right to that object to test and then our other wire right to that object to test. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, there's four wires in a Kelvin wire setup or a Kelvin lead setup sometimes called. And you can even buy setups that are already wired like this, but most of them aren't gonna have the sort of precision that we can get from this in a very inexpensive setup. So there we go, one, two, three, four. And I should note that these connections, at least from the ohm meter, needs to be as close as possible to where we want to test. So for example, on this motor, okay, maybe not the best example for what I'm gonna say here. For example, on this motor, if we are testing at the end of our leads right here, it is going to give us a different result than if we are testing at the solder points on here. So that is something to keep in mind. So whatever you're testing, you wanna be consistent and also know that anything that is behind where these wires are connected is going to be included in our results. And I have done this before. If I remember correctly, it was about 0.1 milliohm for this one and then a 0.1 milliohm for the other one. So adjusting our point of measurement from the end of the wires to the end of where the motor solder point is was about a 0.0, it was two milliohm. I think I may have said that wrong. I think I said 0.01 or 0.001 milliohm, whatever it was, about two milliohms difference, depending on where you measure from. So if you're going from one motor to another, you just want to make sure you're consistent with the measuring. All right, 
back to the testing. What we are going to do is insert either one amp or 10 amps into our object. And then what we're measuring with these red wires is the voltage drop across the entire thing. And if we're doing one amp through it and we get 0.001 volts of drop that our ohm meter reads, that means we have 0.001 of resistance in ohms. So really simple, especially if you're running only one amp through it. Now, sometimes you may find that one amp isn't enough to give you good resolution. So you can always jump up to 10 amps or even two amps if you want to do a little bit of math and you can get even better resolution on here. So if we did a tenfold factor of amp increase. So this is a 10 amp power supply. It will do no, actually this is a five amp power supply. So we're going to stick with one amps today. You will be able to see however many fold times better. So if we went from one amp to 10 amp, we're going to see a tenfold increase in resolution because we're going to get tenfold of our resistance red out of it. Hopefully that makes sense. So here you go. You can see how our four wires are on that object. Here are the four wires on what I have made here. So I'm going to set that aside here. We have our leads coming in and my, uh, the wires off of my ohm meter are soldered right to the tip. So we are going to get a little bit of resistance of the alligator clips themselves, just a little bit of resistance in here, but it's not going to be very much. It's not going to skew the results very much, especially if we're only passing one amp through it. We're not going to get a whole lot of resistive losses and we really don't need a whole lot of interface between them. Now, if you wanted to be super duper exact on something, then what you would do is actually solder directly to it, or you would make a little harness with maybe four millimeter bullet plugs that had the voltage sensing right on the end of that plug. And then your current would go, pretty much through any path. The current isn't nearly as important. Um, alternatively, we could essentially plug this in and then also have our, our uh, meter here, our ohm meter plugged in to where our outputs are. I find that to be a little fiddly and it tends to create some other problems. So I'm not gonna do that today. I want to have my little clips over here and we're going to just kind of test some objects. So this is a 540M, 1800 kV. We're going to turn our voltage meter on to DC and we've got a little bit of, you know, errant voltage out in life right now. There's all sorts of lights and everything. I clip these together and it pretty much will pull us down to zero. I open it up and sometimes it may start reading you know, we're, 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 uh, we're looking good though. So we've got millivolts. I am going to go ahead and boot this to make sure. What I want to make sure is that I am limiting I'm going to limit this down to one amp. Pardon the beepy, 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 beepy. See, we've got really good resolution on this. Bam, one amp. There we go. And voltage really won't matter as long as it's enough voltage so that we can get one amp through the circuit. You may have to play with your objects to figure out where that is. But there we go. We're gonna attach these two Kelvin wire tips to the motor and then when I hit output it's gonna jiggle a little bit because it's a three-phase motor with only two phases being energized boom and this is showing millivolts so 24 millivolts is going through this motor right now and that means that this is a 24 milli ohm motor when tested on two of the three legs now we can jump this around there's going to be a little bit of unevenness. Ooh -wee, ha -ha. All right, 24. And then we go this way. <laughs> and 25. So there, there's always a little bit of unevenness between three phases of a motor because it's really hard to terminate them exactly. But we can say about 24 milliohms for this particular motor. Now you just do have to make sure that when you're looking on your voltmeter that you see what scale that it's in. And this one is showing millivolts up top. So lots of resolution using a very inexpensive, I mean, this was like a 
voltmeter very inexpensive but we get really good resolution because we're just measuring volts an object that measures really really fine amperage is going to be very expensive as we talked about before on the you know and it's, it really it's a kelvin wire setup on the inside uh, but they're charging a premium for people not knowing how to build them essentially all right so this is an in runner this is a 10 pole in runner and i can tell you from experience that even though both of these are 1800 kvs they both have the same stator stack length to them that an in runner is probably going to have a lot more resistance to it and why is that because they're the amount of active motor is technically smaller a rotor is smaller uh yeah we could fit more copper in there but typically an end runner is not going to be as competitive on our ability to have a low resistance. So let's see if this holds up. Turn it on. Mm. So for the same KV, this one was 24 milliohms. This one is 37 milliohms. That shows me exactly what I thought it would be, is that this one is not going to be quite as power dense. Now, on the other hand, it does have a lot more surface area that we can dissipate heat. So even though it's a much higher resistance, it might be able to run on average at a little higher wattage but when we're talking about peak and being caught in a bind and being able to make torque this one simply will not be able to pull as much torque as that outrunner will and outrunners have a torque density advantage and this is the reason why this is exactly the reason why all right i'm going to switch phases a little higher that one's 40. And we're going to switch phases once more i oh, want to make sure that we're not touching okay that one's about 40 so we had one that was a little lower than the rest and this one's 40 now if we let it sit it will actually start generating heat and we will see this climbing but one amp really isn't enough to change that um, just for the sake of my own interest let's see okay I'm gonna I'm gonna see what the resistance of the lead is so all the way down the lead to the front of the motor here all right, a little higher than I remember. That was nine milliohms. But remember, I also tested the outrunner through the wire leads. So to make sure that we're doing things consistently, I would always want to measure consistently with those wires included. But if we attach directly to the motor right there, we're, we're down to 33. So a significant amount of the motor resistance is actually in these wire leads and this is why in a really high powered vehicle you would want the shortest leads possible you don't want an extra foot of wire inside your vehicle whether it's on the battery side or whether it's on the motor side getting rid of as much resistance as possible is the way that you will make maximum power and i do realize that a lot of this does not apply to rock crawlers but it does apply to anybody who's trying to get maximum performance out of their system now this was an 1800 kv motor let's bump up to Let's see, this one is also an 1800 kV motor, but this one has a lot more stator inside. It's also a four pole. Uh, so we're completely changing topologies and we have um, about 80% more stator. We're going from a 15 millimeter long stator to a 25 millimeter long stator. So even for the same kV, it's almost guaranteed that we're gonna go down in resistance because bigger motors have less resistance and more ability to produce power. So let's take a look. See if my inclinations are correct. Ooh, this one is actually the same resistance through the wires. Interesting. Now I will say that both of these are the same stators. And if you go from four pole to 10 pole, you will typically have a lower resistance, but it's, you know, kind of a dark magic in a lot of ways. So very surprisingly, this actually does not have any lower of a resistance. Hmm, interesting but that doesn't really tell us enough information to make conclusions from that you know this is a lot of motor it is a lot of motor all right so you can see how i judged the milliohm resistance of these motors which was very very small by using this kelvin wire setup very inexpensive this power supply may have been a little bit on the more expensive side but it has a very wide voltage range this is a 60 volt unit if you're wanting something at home to test that use with normal rc car components you really only need you know maybe 20 volts tops um, the one thing that you cannot test with this is batteries please don't try <laughs> You, you will have a very bad time your meter will essentially smoke one of them will to do a resistance test on batteries you really need a load and that's something that 
I would have to actually create a load bank setup where we could control the amperage through it. And that's kind of tough. And that's why there are systems that you can buy out there that's pretty much battery testers pre-made and they're pretty useful, but I don't really, I don't really do that. So maybe it's something that I should work for in the future. Let me know if you'd be interested in at least seeing something like that built. What else could we test in here? Hmm, I've got this little guy, but uh, no, I don't have an easy way to, to hack into that. So, oh, let's try, let's try one of these uh, Magnum rotors. I just want to try, I want to see what the rotor resistance is. So this does not include the brushes at all, of course, because it's not installed into a motor. And we're going to get one coil that is in parallel with two coils that are in series. But this is exactly what you would see if you're you're testing directly on the terminals with the brushes installed, minus the brushes. Obviously, the brushes are not in the way on this. So let's see what these coils are. And how many turns was this? Let's see if it's listed on here. It is not listed, is it? It's probably 38 turn. Mm, yeah, this was an early one that we did. All right, so let's see. About the same 40 milliohms for this. So once we get the brushes involved, this one's not going to be able to make as much power as a brushless motor. That's kind of to be, you know, that, that shouldn't need to be stated, but I'm going to state it anyway. Brush motors typically are not as power dense because of the heat shedding and the brushes being in the way. So once we add the brushes, uh, I forget what brushes are. I think they're about seven milliohms or something like that. It's going to have a higher resistance for the equal KV, which those are pretty similar. And again, I don't know if we can really make any good conclusions based off of that, but just for my own knowledge there, I was interested in what that was. So, hey, about the same. Interesting. Well, if you do have any questions about this, or maybe there is something else that you would like me to test for the camera, I can certainly do it. And in the meantime, I'm going to put this stuff back and I use this quite frequently. If there's a motor that has a short in one phase, we can pull this guy out and we can tell really really easily so there you go this is a kelvin wire resistance setup using the four wire kelvin lead method with an ohm meter a cc cv power supply and an object to test super straightforward easy to do yourself and if you want really good resolution you can make this at home and save many 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 hundreds of dollars so as always thanks for tuning in i hope this was helpful have a great day You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully that means you liked what you saw. If you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.